This is Heathrow, Britain's busiest airport, returning to the skies after taking a pounding from the pandemic. That's the kind of shop we want to see coming back to Heathrow, full of aeroplanes. Now... This is the file I've had for travelling. In normal days, I used to fly through. That's just a joke. Frustrated passengers are on the increase. It's not social distancing. Can't you do something about it? The heat makes people quite angry. But Heathrow never gives up. <laughs> With its long-suffering staff battling to give passengers hope every day. It won't be long, guys. I'm just going to get the motor room, OK? Did you see that? Are you OK in there? Taking pride over every arrival hey. and departure. Dealing with the suspicious. You couldn't take another flight, let's put it that way. The luxurious. And how much would you like to put on the part? 9,000? And the ostentatious. <laughs> Heathrow's existence hangs in the balance. Oh, 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 stop, 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 stop. But this is still Britain's busiest airport. I think we're going to start picking up soon. <laughs> Maybank holiday is approaching and the airfield at Heathrow is showing signs of opening up as travel restrictions are finally being lifted, giving the airport a much needed boost. Hello, sir. Could you put your mask up for me, please? Countries are being divided into colours, red, amber and green. Fly somewhere on the green list and you'll no longer need to quarantine on your return. Good news for holidaymakers, even if the list of destinations leaves something to be desired. Brunei, uh, Folk Islands, Faroe Islands, say Helena. Where the hell is that? <laughs> Where is that? That's a small island. So like, look how far that is. That's the middle of proper nowhere. It's no man's land. Whether you're planning the 7,500 kilometre trip to St Helena or not, Flying under the new system means navigating a dizzying array of rules, stipulations, tests and quarantine times. We had to pay for a PCR before we left, although we've both been vaccinated twice, which we consider unreasonable, for an exorbitant amount, even for people who live in Switzerland. Friday, I did my PCR test. I asked about my daughter. I was told she didn't need one and I've arrived at the airport today to be told that she does need one over the age of two, so the rules have changed again. It is a lot of hassle, you know, organising the test to go there, the test to come back. It takes you like a day, uh, and it costs you five times more than the plane ticket. It's not just the passengers who are struggling to keep up with the rules. There's loads of rules. Rules are changing all the time. It does get confusing, so you get to a stage whereby your, your brain just gets frustrated. You can, go off, you, can, you can go off on your rest days for six days, and then everything's changed again. In Terminal 2, customer service manager Demi is responsible for guiding travellers through the maze of new regulations. Can you name me all 12 green, green lists? Um, no, I can name you about four or five, to be honest with you. A lot of them I've never even heard of. We've got Portugal at the moment. We've got the Gibraltar, so another nice little destination there. Iceland. Do you know what? I wouldn't mind Iceland. Iceland's meant to be really, really nice. What's it called? The... Uh, what are they called? The delights, what are they called? What are the lights called in Iceland? While Demi's dreaming of the Northern Lights, one passenger is seeing red. They are now telling me by the time I get to my destination, my, my, my coffee test is, is, is expired. When I paid money. Hiya, everything all right? What's up? My daughter in law. Yeah. Booked a flight for me to travel to Lusaka. Right. Because she had in a cesarean section. And I was asked to do a um, CPR. PCR test. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I've just been told that by the time I get to Dubai, that certificate is no longer valid. Oh, so you're going by Dubai? Yes. Oh. This passenger is trying to get to Zambia to meet her new grandchild. To travel to any country, she needs a negative COVID test taken within 72 hours. But the lengthy journey means her test will expire while she's in Dubai for her stopover. So what have they advised you to do now? I have to go back and get another test and then rebook and then do everything. I'm they up. say they were going to rebook you? They, no, I didn't get the ticket through the, the airline. It's an agent that got the ticket for me. Oh, you've done it through an agent? 
What oh. type of business is this? Why do you get people's money without proper guidelines? Well, have you spoken to your agent? She has no choice because she, she, she's an agent who is somewhere and my money is gone. Who, who is supposed to, to give me proper guidelines here? Is it Dubai? Is it airline? No, it's the agent, the person that sells you the ticket. It's not, that, it's not down to Emirates. Emirates don't know because you, you haven't done business with Emirates. You've done business with the agent. But as far as I'm concerned, from what you're telling me, is the agent has not advised you correctly. The airline, they're doing their job. Because what will happen is you're going to go to your final destination and they're going to send you straight back yeah, and find Emirates. Airlines are responsible for ensuring everyone on board is complying with COVID regulations. Fail to do so and they'll be fined £2,000 for every offending passenger they carry. Unfortunately for this lady, that means missing her flight and having to shell out for a new ticket when she has another COVID test. But then the thing is, if, even with the testing people, they'll tell you that if you, like if you will go today at four o'clock, it's, it's unlikely that you may get the result like tomorrow. Yeah, they're so very, yeah. That's what, that's, that's yeah, so they, they say up to three days. Yeah. But you could get it the next day. Yeah, but, <laughs> so but yeah. what are supposed to do? It's a catch-22, because the thing is now, if, for instance, the lady went and done her COVID test, she then books in three days' time to go to Dubai with the connection. By the time she gets back, it's expired. Yeah. What do you do? It's, 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 a, it's a very difficult it's a scenario, man. It's a money-making yeah, mechanism. Very, very difficult. Making us suffer. A new COVID test will take up to three days to process. But if the passenger books a new flight for three days' time, the test will once again expire during her stopover in Dubai. Even Demi can't see a way out of this one. I couldn't even answer this one for you. Honestly, I can't even answer that. Who are you? I don't think no one's cheating you. Uh oh. I don't think they're cheating you. It's 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 Sod's law. And right now, Sod's law has left this granny well and truly stranded. Give proper guidelines that are clear. Which book do they read and whose rules guide these people? The airline? The people who call it the COVID test people? Which in Dubai? Wait, wait, wait. What are they doing here? Outside on the airfield, the flight to Dubai is being prepared for its seven-hour trip, with or without Granny. And even though passenger numbers are just 10% of what they were in 2019, the airline is making sure everyone has plenty of space by flying them in their flagship plane, the 517-seater Airbus 380. Cruising nearby with somewhat less legroom is Sergeant Dawson. Les Dawson to his friends. Although the passenger numbers are less, our work here still goes on in terms of the, the uh, counter-terrorism role and our patrols. So we still have to protect the airport, protect the airfield, so it can remain active. So although the passenger numbers are lower, that hasn't really changed. Sergeant Dawson is in charge of a specialist team serving the airport, which receives more than 28,000 call-outs a year and makes over 500 arrests. Can you please make the sound security to buy a stop Right, we'll head in and have a look. Mate, why don't you carry on? Uh, I'm just going to go to that T5 call. Uh, and then I'll get uh, I'll get something afterwards. Got multiple incidents at the same time at the moment. No, no, it was um, Ross asking if we were going for coffee. <laughs> as well as keeping his team fully caffeinated, Sergeant Dawson also needs to investigate whenever something untoward is found making its way onto a plane. It's a walking stick in about three parts. This was uh, screwed into the handle here. Um, kind of thing you get as an ornament. You couldn't take it on a flight, let's put it that way. <laughs> you wouldn't want somebody with it on a plane. Unless you x-rayed it or you know what it is, you wouldn't know it was in there. The item was purchased as a gift by a passenger transiting through from Nigeria to America. But since knives over six centimetres are prohibited, he's going to be showing up empty-handed. Yeah, I think just, uh, yeah, just seize it and allow him to carry on. See, you're not going to be out far of this, so we're going to... Uh, seize it, okay, so I'm it'll be destroyed. Oh man, that's, that's, that's okay. Yeah, because obviously you can't have that. Okay, because okay, you hand up, now you know what it is. Pre-pandemic, around 10 million Brits a year have items confiscated by airport security, with the value of these goods totaling over £300 million. Please, just be more careful with what you carry through the airport in the yeah, future, okay? Shit, man. This ornamental knife doesn't require any further action. All done. Which is fortunate, because Les is going to need all his focus on the next job. 
Yeah, you are fine. Uh, you need to just need to be three, please. Terminal two, possible missing child. Yeah, received on route, mate. That's Ross has just shouted out. We've got a missing four-year-old at Terminal 2, so... Um, we'll probably make quite a response to go over there. That first bit of time immediately after somebody, you know, a child goes missing is critical. The quicker we can get there and try to find him, the better chances. Over 75,000 children a year are reported missing. Half of them are found within the first eight hours, so it's critical Les gets to the scene as quick as possible. The access to the airport is so good that they could, the child could end up anywhere if they wander in the wrong direction. There's tube lines and buses and anything they could get on, but we'll throw as many people as we can at it. 9-1, apparently we've seen on the zone in the net. Yes, Steve, can we get someone there with two? Hunt two, take level one. More officers are immediately dispatched to Terminal 2. That first few minutes, half an hour, hour, it's much, much easier to find missing people. Um, so it's worth throwing everything at it for a short period of time and try and resolve it. But we're going to take level one, so we've got somebody on every level of the car park where the child was last seen. Uh, and we'll try and secure the area like that and uh, see if we can find them. The alarm was raised by a member of the public who saw the child alone in the lift. But these lifts go to six different floors, leading to departures, arrivals, car parks and public transport. And they have no idea where the child got off. So we've not got a parent saying they've lost their child. They may have just been gone down a level and then been reunited with the parents. Uh, but until we can do a bit more work and confirm that, we'll carry on treating it as if, they're, as if we've got a missing child somewhere. That's, uh... We've still got a 9-1, um, having to look at the cameras. Yeah, I'm doing it, Tom. The UK has more surveillance than any other European country, with up to 5 million CCTV cameras. Over 6,000 of them are at Heathrow, and they are now joining the search for the missing child. We'll stay near the lift here in case it comes back this way. We've got someone looking at the cameras, going to wind back the footage and see if they can find any traces of mum and dad, and then we can hopefully track them down. Could be anywhere now, yeah. Come out of a lift get on one of these levels, or could be in the terminal somewhere, and we won't track them down. Could I have a unit to the departure level, all lifts, please? In Terminal 2, there's a search on for a missing child. But the terminal covers some 40,000 square metres and has transport links all over London. So far, there's been no sight of him. It's a lot of resources we've committed, but at the moment, I don't know whether it's a missing child or whether the child's... Something's happened to them, they could have been taken, so it's best to start at a high level, and then we'll see which way it takes us. Just one question, all levels of the car park, in... please. Just to get in, in that yeah. lift yeah. and then up yeah. the floors. All right, well, we'll stay, we'll stay by, stay by the spearhead, and if you want to go to the informant. While officers question the informant, police lingo for the person who raised the alarm, Sergeant Dawson remains stationed on level one of the car park, near where the child was last seen. Hello, mate. Uh, potentially got a missing child in Terminal 2. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know if you can get your guys on the camera, just looking for um, a sort of four-year-old with a pram um, in T-shirt and shorts. And that's about all we've got at the moment. The CCTV cameras have had their beady eyes searching for the boy for almost half an hour. But so far, there's been no sight of him. Yeah, the airport's an absolute maze. Um, so it's going to be like trying to find a needle in a haystack, but the CCTV should lead us in the right direction and hopefully we'll make some progress. Delta's confirm uh, that's going to be a hold on the lifts. Yeah, R5, they are about to do it, uh, so very shortly all lifts will be on the departure level. Okay, so we just um, asked the lifts to be stopped so we can just control the movement a bit better and try and find the child, stop them moving around if they are here. No, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they came no. out the lift, the two informants. Yeah. The kids going into the lift with the pusher saying, I'm looking for my mum. Yeah. Um, and I said, she's... said, I'm looking for my mum. Yeah. They then come up, found me and Ross. Yeah. Looking down here, we could see the kid and the pusher go this way. I saw, I saw it. So we saw the kid with the pusher go this way, but the only place they could go is in the lift, so we don't know. I was on level three for five, six minutes. He didn't come out level three. So okay. we've got units every bit of the car park. We've got yeah, Milan yeah. Hall downstairs. We've got Ross inside there, and we've got two security staff in the car yeah, so. If, if the yeah, if the informant's not, if not really of any use there, I reckon take the informant up to the checking desks, security, wander around departures, see if they can find mum and dad up there. Okay. 
I mean, we're doing, already doing everything we need to do, um, but the fact that the child said, I'm looking for, I'm looking for mum, is a bit more concerning. Back at Police HQ, the CCTV operators have made a breakthrough. By reviewing footage from earlier in the day, they have identified the child and his mother and are retracing their journey through the airport. The CCTV's our best tool in this kind of situation because almost everywhere is covered. Just takes that time for them to track down where the missing kid is and wind it back to see where they went missing, where they were last seen. So we've just got to keep things contained while they do their best to get back to that point as quickly as they can. On the first floor, the child is seen getting into a lift, but the doors close before his mum can follow him. For the next four and a half minutes, she frantically tries to recall the lift, not knowing whether he's got out on another floor or not. Hello, buddy. Was that um, fairly positive seeing getting into a cab? Yes, I believe that the child's got into a cab. CCTV has seen it. Alone or with parents? Uh, with a mum and another young child, David. OK, nice one, mate. Eventually, the boy manages to find his way back to his mother at the lift, and the CCTV operators trace the family to the taxi rank on the ground floor. OK, that looks good, mate. Happy to, uh, on that basis, stand down the search here and we'll release the lifts, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I think so. We'll make some inquiries to get a uh, welfare check on yeah. the address to identify it. Just for, yeah, complete. All right, cheers, mate. That's pretty much the end of the inquiries on this one. We release all the units back to go, go back to their patrol, and, um, and we're pretty happy that all's OK. We did get a few of these things at the airport, um, but thankfully this one was, was all right in the end. The UK government's traffic light system for flights in and out of the country is finally giving holidaymakers an opportunity to depart from Heathrow for the first time in six months. The number of hoops passengers will have to jump through to enter and exit their destination all depends on their country of choice. They sent me the document to travel, they booked me in, they checked me in, knowing very well, why didn't they explain before they checked me in? For this passenger, going to Zambia on the red list means 10 days quarantine when she returns. It's off limits for holidaymakers, but not for desperate grannies visiting their grandchildren for the first time. The COVID test she needs to travel expires during her 17-hour journey. As a result, the airline aren't letting her on board. What's where Emirates, people so are where, just where taking are people's so money what, what without Emirates telling us. Do? What did Emirates say they're going to do for the lady? Did Emirates say they can rebook her? No. What can they do? What did they say? When's the next flight? They said to rebook with your rebook. Agent, right. the agent. But the travel agent who she bought the tickets from is refusing to help her, leaving Granny out of options. This know. is not right by cheating. So, shall we go and see Emirates and see what they advise? Shall we go and yes, ask them to yes, see I'm what willing. they would say? Let's go and speak to them and because see I'm what they advise. Now. How do I go back to Covent? I don't yeah. have money. Let's Hello. see what they advise, all right? Hello. And I'll come back, all right? Hello. Tell the lady not to stress out. It's happened now, so don't get her upset. All it's right, down to seconds. Demi to try and grease right. the wheels and see if his contacts at the airline can pull a few strings for her. Um, let's see if there's a supervisor here. Hi, buddy, how you doing? You all right? I don't know if you're aware of that lady. Yeah. So, she's in a predicament. She's in a bit of a catch-22, because I think she's, uh, she weren't accepted on the flight because her COVID test would have expired when she got to her final destination. Is that right? That's correct, yes. The problem I'm getting is now, she could book her PCR test. She's now got her flight booked in three days' time because she's expecting the COVID test to come in 72 hours. Right. By the time she gets here, her COVID test expires again by the time she gets to her final destination. How, how, however, yes. there is, like... Um, Randox, right at Radisson, right. You get your test within four hours, right. So Randox, so where's that? So, at the Radisson Blue, uh, Radisson Edwardian on the Bath Road, right. Okay. So when's the next flight to go from Dubai to her final destination? I'd so, have to double check on the system. Yeah, is that okay to check? Because she's pretty upset. Is there any chance we could put her on that next flight with that connection and try and look after her? Yeah, no, then no, I can no. advise her about this four-hour test. So I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Okay, let me just double check. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, sure. With a high demand for tests at the airport, a new facility at a local hotel just outside Heathrow is offering four-hour PCR tests for £189. Now they just need to see if the airline will rebook her. He's just holding the line now. No, just waiting. He's plugging away to see if he can sort it out, but nothing as of yet. So Demi calls Emirates HQ to explain the situation. She's an elderly lady. Her daughter's just had a C-section. 
and obviously she's going to be uh, emotions everywhere, I think, so um, she's going to be stressing, that's for sure. Yeah, I've given her a window seat for tomorrow and I've blocked a row off. OK? You're a legend, mate. I know you don't. Thank you very much. That's very helpful from you, my friend. I really appreciate that. The things I do for you. Right. I've booked really? you for tomorrow. Exactly the same flight. Yes. Free of charge. Tomorrow you're flying. I'm flying. Done. Jesus Christ. And the return I've not changed. So you're returning on the same day. Thank you very much. But tomorrow you need the PCR test, right? There's a place on the Bath Road. They give you result in four hours. Once you have that test, you then come here and check in. Emirates say they don't usually do it, but they're doing it for you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. What's your name? My name's Demetrius. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh -huh. Thank you so Thank you. much. So OK. Much. You need a picture. Oh. Yeah. OK, let's do, let's do one. Yeah. Good result. Look up and smile. What are you texting your boyfriend for? <laughs> 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 Her daughter's just had a baby, um, so she wanted to see her grandchild. Um, she was very stressed, she was very upset, so we've just turned it around, and that's, that's the best part of it. Good luck. Thank you very much. Okay, I hope everything goes well for you tomorrow, Thank all right? You. Take care of yourselves. Lovely meeting you. Thank you. Take care. He's been an angel. Good saint. I feel great. I wish I could dance, huh? I wish I could dance. Da, da. I thank God for that. Thank God. Tomorrow I'm on my flight to see my family in Africa, like intended, and no fee. I thank God. The airline is potentially going to take him off his flight. He's going to have to power walk it. All right, let's start putting them out. Bring them out, let's start. We can't start letting people in willy-nilly, because otherwise we're going to go into another lockdown.